Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online VGC 18 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Shouldn't need too many introductions at this point, as you know, we are just continuing our time with this double belly drum team that I created right before I went to the Oceania International Championships. Of course, I am back from that now. I've posted two episodes, so this is going to be the third one, and as you can tell, I'm really just trying to get back into the swing of daily uploads. And so, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and as always, if you guys enjoy Road to Rank, please share your support by leaving a like. I'd really appreciate it. First opponent of the day runs a really interesting kind of rain hybrid team, so... Reminds me a little bit of my last team because I had the Lele and the Zapdos. Speaking of the last team, the team analysis for that either should be up by the point this video goes up or it'll go up tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'm pre-recording this video and I'm trying to get the team report recorded and uploaded by tonight. So, yeah. So, keep your eyes open up for that and uh, that's for the previous rain team I used. So, Pelipper, Swamper, Zapdos, Lele, Ferrothorn, and the Muck. The Ferrothorn is honestly going to be a huge problem for me. I am quite... Ferrothorn weak. I'm thinking of leading Kang Goth because with Kang I can still fake out the Zapdos and the uh, Pelipper because they're grounded. Um, now my Amoongus doesn't have Giga Drain which is kind of a problem but it might still be worth bringing just to spore things. I'm thinking of going Amoongus and Snorlax just because Snorlax once it belly drums can high horsepower the Ferrothorn but my Ferrothorn answers are honestly very shoddy. Uh, this team is very weak to Ferrothorn, so I think my opponent should definitely bring that. The question is whether you go with, like, Rain or not. But the thing is, if my opponent does some, like, like lead Ferrothorn, I could just help me hand low kick and maybe eliminate it right away. So that's something I'm going for as well. So I do like Amoongus and Snorlax in the back. And I'm going to lock in. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Azumo you could actually make a decent case for, but the thing is, I can't really bring Tapu Koko into this matchup, which means I can't control the terrain, and that means if Psychic Terrain is up, I can't Aqua Jet anything that's grounded, so I can obviously hit the Pelipper and the Zapdos, but I can't hit Swampert, Lele, Ferrothorn, and Muck, which is kind of a problem, because my knockoffs don't do too much to most of those either. So we are going to see the Ferrothorn Lele lead. So immediately there's some mind games because I want it. What I want to do is just help me hand low kick Ferrothorn because if I can eliminate Ferrothorn, that'd be really huge for me. Alternatively, I could just help me hand Double Edge to knock out the Lele potentially. I just think like right now you might think that the Ferrothorn's in a pretty safe spot. Uh, now the thing is, Lele is quite a big threat to my team as well, but I just don't have good damage output against this Ferrothorn at all otherwise. So, I think I will go for it. If my opponent goes for the Protect on Ferrothorn, then I will be really impressed. Because Lele here, if it's Scarf, the Psychic shouldn't be able to knock me out. If it's Z-Move, then you'd have to Z-Move to knock out Kangaskhan. Otherwise, it might be tempted to go for, like, a Taunt onto Gothitelle. So, let's see. Hoping Hand comes out. Obviously, my opponent can't switch because of the Shadow Tag. Does Ferrothorn protect? It, neither Pokemon protect, but I'll still take that because that means I get the low kick off against Ferrothorn, which should mean a knockout. Ideally, like, Lele goes for, like, a Taunt. Um, but I'll take that knockout onto Ferrothorn just because that at least paves the way a little bit more now. Um, however, I still do need to knock out the Lele as well. These are pretty much the two biggest threats to my team. And looks like we are going to see a Z-move. So, I'll take that, I guess. Um, I could have also just gone for the double edge into Lele, but I thought Lele there is more likely to protect, and I'd rather get rid of Ferrothorn. But in retrospect, it's actually maybe better just to get rid of Lele, because then Snorlax and Goth will beat the Ferrothorn with Belly Drum. Whereas Lele is a little bit more offensive. So maybe it would have been better just committing to knocking out the top of Lele instead. I just uh, know that I really don't have any tools to do deal with the deal with the Ferrothorn. So I'm going to bring in Snorlax now. So Lele is still trapped in. I got to wonder if it has Taunt because it isn't a Scarf or Specs variant. Obviously it did have the Psychic Z. And uh, I guess looking back, probably helping hand double edging to knock out Lele is probably better, just because Scott Snorlax, like I mentioned, do deal with the... And it's Muck coming in, which is actually really bad for me. Hmm. I'm in a pretty awkward spot right now. Because you can just knock off my berry. It comes down to whether Lele has taunt or not. You could also double up into Gothitelle. So I could go for a really risky play in Belly Drum here, but I think it's more likely to get knocked off. And even if I get knocked off, I do have the use of um heal pulse so i think i'm gonna try to just knock out lele here by getting some damage off i'm gonna trick room and return into lele okay so lele does have taunt that's really bad news but it targets the uh snorlax actually okay as knockoff goes into goth 
Not what I expected, but I'll take that. That's quite good for me, actually. So I will get the Trick Room up as well. So I'm taunted, but, uh, I mean, Heal Pulse doesn't really do much for me right now. I could switch into a Moongus. I think here, if you're my opponent, you protect Tapu Lele, and you knock off Snorlax. Mm. So God doesn't have recovery anymore. I could, like... I kind of want to switch Goth out. Uh, maybe it's worth... The, the issue is that I have recovery berries on all of these things. But maybe it's worth switching into Amoongus here. Yeah, I'm actually going to switch into Amoongus. Because I think Lele here should protect. Although this is quite risky if Lele actually for some reason doesn't protect. And I'm going to Psyshock. Because I can't... Uh, I'm taunted. Maybe this was too risky. Let's see. Okay, nice. So that's good. Now I could potentially put something to sleep, and because I didn't get the berry knocked off on Snorlax, I could potentially still belly drum right now. So, yep, there's a knockoff. There's the Moongus target. Okay. Um, I'm going to heal Pulse Amoongus right now. How many turns of Trick Room are left? I still got a couple. I just need to get belly drum off on one, and I'm good. So, I'm just going to go for the knockout here onto the Lele and heal Pulse myself. Ideally, the Muck knocks out Got, so I get a free switch in into Snorlax. I know Lele can't protect here. I mean, it could, but it would have to go for a double. And if I trade Amoongus, or sorry, Goth for Lele, that's really good for me, because then Amoongus can still just Spore, and now Ferrothorn's out of the way. So, yeah, I was surprised to see the knockoff go on to the Goth, and, like, I think if I'm an opponent, I would probably just double up onto maybe the Goth instead of Taunting, or just knock off the Snorlax to make sure I can't Belly Drum. So, because my opponent didn't knock me off, that gives me a window of opportunity. I will get my heal pulse off as well, so I'll heal back all that damage that the knockoff did. Pretty important, um, just to keep Amoongus around for longer. There's a knockoff, and there's a targeted to Goth, which is perfect. So, that's exactly what I wanted. I've got two turns of Trick Room now, and I've got the potential to Spore. So, what I could do is just Spore and Belly Drum, and, uh, Spore into Muck and Belly Drum to make sure... Actually, I don't even need to Spore into Muck, because I'm going to outspeed under Trick Room. So, I could just Belly Drum. Which is, uh, who's the last one? It's gonna be Zapdos. That's a pretty good last one to see on my opponent's end. So, I think... And it's Psychic Seed Zapdos, which means it should not... I think I should win this one now. Um, let's see, I just want to make sure. There are two turns of Trick Room. Zapdoses with Psychic Seed aren't going to carry Protect most of the times. So... All I need to do, I just want, I'm going to spore the Zapdos in case it tries to burn me with a Heat Wave. And I'm going to Belly Drum here because I will get it off, so Knock Off would not be able to knock me out. Sorry, Knock Off would not get rid of my Berry. And Poison Jab at most would do a little bit, but this would heal me back all the way to 100%. So this seems like a very safe play. Yeah, I think my opponent made a pretty big mistake not knocking off Snorlax earlier. Because now I do get the plus 6, and I still have 2 turns of Trick Room. I could have Rage Potter there, but of course, if I get burned with Heat Wave, um, like now I just one shot both things with Return. And I know the Zapdos isn't something like Goggles because I saw the Psychic Seed, so it's going to take a guaranteed first turn to sleep here. Muck will get one attack off, but this means next turn, and it is just going to go for the knockoff. But like I mentioned, I don't have the berry anymore. So that doesn't, not only does it not get rid of my berry, it also doesn't do that much damage. So because most Zapdoses aren't going to carry Protect, um, I can just Spore into Muck. And even if that protects, I'm just going to return into Zapdos. And then the next turn, Trick Room ends, and I can just Rage Powder return to knock out Muck. So unless Zapdos does have Protect and it wakes up here, I should have the game won. Even if it does, though, I'm still in a, I still am, I think, in a pretty favorable position. But it does not reveal uh, that it has Protect. So, yep, uh, just playing as safe as possible here. But Amoongus Norlax really carrying me through this endgame. Plus 6 return, of course, gets the knockout of the Zapdos. Now I have to do is Rage Powder return, and Muck will faint. So, yeah, that's exactly why I wanted to get rid of Ferrothorn, because Ferrothorn, of course, can not only ignore my redirection from Amoongus, but it's just annoying with Leech Seed, um, which is why I did prioritize it earlier. But I'm still thinking maybe it would have been better to go for the knockout earlier onto the Tapu Lele. Regardless, though, we do end up with a win. But uh, one in which, yeah, I, like, I really think Muck probably should have knocked me off. I, I still felt, like, okay about my position, because Snorlax does a lot of damage to my opponent's team. But uh, the belly jump setup, I just like felt really confident uh, after that turn. Like, just because uh, I knew that Snor like Trickum would go up, I knew I could maneuver Amoongus into a good spot, and I knew that Snorlax could end the game with the belly drum. So yeah, we do get a win there. Um, yeah, that was a tough matchup just because like Ferrothorn is really difficult to deal with in general. So I think if I could replay that, 
let's say that I help a hand double edge knock out the uh, Lele immediately, then Ferrothorn, like the thing is, even if Lele protects there, Ferrothorn at most gets a Gyro Ball or a Leech Seed off, neither which really do too much to me. Unless it's banned Ferrothorn and it goes for knockoff against Goth, that actually could have been really bad. Um, that's an option I didn't really mention. So that certainly could have been something that my opponent had, but in the end it works out pretty well for me. Um, so let's say it's regular Ferrothorn, like Lefty's variant, then Double Edge, I'll be on Double Edge knocks out Lele. My opponent gets an attack off with Ferrothorn, you switch into either Muck or Zapdos, but Kangaskhan outspeeds both of those. So if you switch into Muck, I'm probably going to Helping Hand low kick the Ferrothorn slot, as Mark from New Jersey is going to come, and I'll probably Trick Room there. Um, I don't know, it could really go both ways, but we're actually going up against another Azumarill team here. Uh, three of the same Pokemon, Azumarill, Coco, Amoongus, but you got Landris, Metagross, and Heatran here. So, this is going to be very interesting. Um, Metagross is, you know, not, does, there's no, uh, Tapu Lele on that team, so no Psychic Train boosts, but it's still probably gonna, actually, I actually gotta ask whether it has Zen Headbutt or not, and that is going to be big. My Amoongus is pretty tempting solely to deal with my opponent's Azumarill. I could go for a trap here as well and go with a Gothitelle lead. But I'm thinking, how do I counter Azumarill and Amoongus on my opponent's side? And there really isn't too much other than maybe my Kangaskhan and Amoongus. But then you could easily just switch into Coco. Um, but Sludge Bomb would do good damage. Hmm. Yeah. I might actually go with my own Azumarill and Amoongus here, because I don't see a way to stop my opponent's Azumarill and Amoongus, which is pretty bad. Azumarill and Amoongus. Mm. Snorlax offensively still seems decent. I'm not the biggest fan of Goth in this one. I think I should bring Kangaskhan for sure. And maybe Coco for offense, yeah. So... Uh, this is pretty different from the way I typically play with this team, but I'm just not the biggest fan of going with, like, the Trick Room setup with Goth, because uh, my opponent has Azumarill as well. If the Azumarill were on this team, um, then it would probably be a completely different story. I'd probably lead Kang Goth, which seems like the most common lead with my team, or maybe even Kang Azumarill. But just the threat of Azumarill on my opponent's side is a little bit much to deal with, so... I know I have Spore and Sludge Bomb on my Amoongus, so let's see what my opponent decides to bring. It's gonna be Landers Amoongus, okay. Well, there's going to be a lot of Spore Wars this game, that's for sure. So, I mean, I'm probably just going to withdraw Azumarill out and Spore Landers turn 1. Or actually just protect Azumarill and Spore. Um, I could also see Coco switching in for my opponent, but then I would get the switch into my own Coco. I just like, if you're my opponent's Landers here, you should probably U-turn Amoongus and go out into Coco. So I could make a big play, but then that means you can't Spore the Azumarill. I kind of want to just knock off, or sorry, Aqua Jet Sludge Bomb, because that would knock out Coco if it's coming in from my opponent's side. It's probably safer to just protect and Spore Landers. But I really feel like it should U-turn out. But you know what? I'm just going to protect and Spore, because I'm not sure if my opponent brought Coco yet. Uh, the other play I really wanted to make was a um, knock off and Sludge Bomb into that slot. But we'll see. Oh, Landers just knocks off. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'll take that idea. I put the Landers to sleep. I do lose my Barry, but with Regenerator, that's not the biggest deal. Now I could potentially... We'll see what Amoongus goes for here. It does go for a Spore. So if my opponent Spores again, I can just switch into Coco and Belly Drum. I think I'm actually going to go for this. Because Amoongus shouldn't be able to knock me out with either Giga Drain or Sludge Bomb anyway. Um, as long as I don't get, like, poisoned. And then it would come down to how quickly Landers wakes up. Yeah. Mm, maybe I should have brought Goth, actually. I think if I brought Goth, I'd actually have this game won, depending on how this turn went. Because then I could switch out into Goth. Terrain would be up, Amoongus would be trapped, and then I could heal Pulse away. So, yeah. But I didn't anticipate Landers and Amoongus as a lead. Okay, so I get my Belly Drum off now. I don't know the item on Landers, which is the biggest issue. I don't have Intimidate on this team. Like, normally, God team should have Intimidate, but I didn't really have too much room for it. So, we'll see if Amoongus makes the call here. I, I, it should Giga Drain or Sludge Bomb, but uh, it does Sludge Bomb. It's a good call. Doesn't knock me out, though. No poison, please. Okay. So, no poison there is good. Now, the question is, do I gamble a little bit? Because I can Aqua Jet the Landers slot, or I could just go for a knockoff. 
So the question is, like, Landris is taking one turn of sleep, so you could protect Amoongus here and try to wake up with Landris, in which I can snipe you with an Aqua Jet, or you uh, just attack with Amoongus and try to get a Sludge Bomb off. Or you could Rage Powder Earthquake. Hmm. I think I'm going to go for the knockoff here. If Landris stays asleep, I might just win the game off that. But if it wakes up, I might just lose. So maybe I should protect Coco. Yeah, it's probably good. Just in case it wakes up. This is going to be a big turn, though. I think this will actually decide the game. Maybe it's a little bit early to say that, but that's how I feel about the game right now. Okay, Amoongus Rage Powders, which is good. So if Landris stays asleep, I'm in a really good spot. But if it wakes up, I'm screwed. And it stays asleep. Okay. Yeah, I gambled pretty hard on that one, so I'm not the biggest fan. Um, really good call on my opponent to Sludge Bomb last turn instead of Spore. But Knockoff here, we'll get the Knockout. That's exactly why you run Knockoff on Azumarill. Uh, return is also an option. I know Sage and Park have that. But now my Azumarill just threatens with plus 6 Aqua Jet, which just knocks out the Landorus. So, yeah, I think my opponent was really hoping to wake up there and just get an Earthquake off. But fortunately enough for me, it does stay asleep. But I'm not the biggest fan. I'm trying. I, I want to go back and look, go to the drawing board after this game and see what I could have done better. Um, but Metagross is going to come in. And my opponent doesn't have Lele. Now, I gotta ask whether it actually has Bullet Punch or not. Because if it does, that could be interesting. One option I could do right now is actually protect Azumarill. To scout out for something like a Bullet Punch. And attack with Coco. I, I'm going to guess that's Assault Vest Landorus. So I want to launch the Z-move here into Metagross. Because my opponent doesn't have ter terrain control. Okay, now, my opponent could just go for like Earthquake Protect. If you have Bullet Punch, you would Bullet Punch. Uh, I would probably protect Metagross and just Earthquake here. Let's see. I think I'm actually going to Aqua Jet Landorus and Z-Move. Uh, I'm actually... Don't feel that great about that play. Um, Landorus does switch out. Okay. Into a Zoom roll. That's fine. So even if it doesn't have Bullet Punch, I mean the Z-move, even if it doesn't outright knock out the Metagross, we'll put it where Thunderbolt should KO it. So I feel pretty decent about this turn regardless of what happens, I think. And it just protects. Okay. Uh, so I do burn, I mean burn technically my Z-move, but uh, Aqua Jet still should chunk out down a Zoom roll. Uh, brings it just under Citrus range, or just over Citrus range, which means now I get Thunderbolt that slot. Yeah, so I guess my opponent didn't want to gamble with sleep turns anymore, but... Uh, yeah, me, just like the Landris thing asleep for a second turn was just such a big deal. Because surely Landris was earthquaking there and that would have just knocked out my Azumarill and I wouldn't have been able to knock out Amoongus. So I would have been in a, not like the best spot there. But Gigabolt Havoc will come out, should chunk down Metagross. Um, yeah, it does an okay amount. Yeah, I, I really gotta ask now, like does it have Bullet Punch? Because if it doesn't, I think I just win. So I'm just gonna Aqua Jet now into Metagross and Thunderbolt Azumarill. Worst case, Azumarill switches out into Landorus, Metagross bullet punches, but then I get a free switch in and a Kangaskhan. And I, I really don't think that Landorus is Scarfed. I think it's Assault Vest. So, yeah, like, my, my opponent's Aqua Jet from Azumarill won't knock mine out, definitely. Yeah, so you need bullet punch, otherwise Aqua Jet will either knock out Metagross or Landorus, and Thunderbolt will just knock out Azumarill. So, yeah, it comes down to whether Metagross has bullet punch. We are seeing Azumarill switch out, but that is basically the best play possible. I could have HP iced that slot, but I did not want to risk it getting a potential belly drum off. I'm fine with Landers coming in here, especially if Metagross doesn't have Bullet Punch, because then I would win the game anyway. And it doesn't have Bullet Punch, I think Aqua just should just knock out, because of the chip damage I got off earlier, as it does, yeah. So, yeah. Thunderbolt will come out, but now I can just Aqua Jet into Landorus. In fact, I can just Aqua Jet and HP ice. Although, it is probably better still to Thunderbolt the Azumarill slot, because I've got Kang and... Um, with Kang and Amoongus in the back, it's probably safer to just Thunderbolt Azumarill because it covers for the option of it belly drumming. And that would be like one way to lose this game. So Aqua Jet and Thunderbolt Azumarill. Uh, plus 5 Aqua Jet, I think, should still knock out even like bulky Landorus's. But no protects, so I think that should just be game here. Aqua Jet gets the knockout. Yeah, I cannot stress how big it was that uh, Landorus stayed asleep there. Uh, but like I said, I knew I was gambling a little bit. But I didn't think I really had a much better play in the position that I was in. As uh, Aqua Jet from my opponent's Azumarill doesn't knock me out, also slower, and Tebow here should seal up the deal. So we do get a 4-0 win, but one that easily could have turned around or been very different based off uh, 
yeah, that's the turn with Landorus. So I'll probably play a third game just because I did miss out on a couple of obviously like a week's worth of uploads. So bring you guys some more content and uh, having I am having a lot of fun with this team definitely. I think like yeah I wanted to talk a little bit and while well, my room is really dark now uh, I might turn the light on uh, or just do it after the next episode. I've got like a lamp on the back so like when I work here it's fine and I kind of like the ambiance but when it comes to seeing my face it's a little bit darker. But uh, yeah anyway like talking about that last game mm, God could have been decent because I could have been in a position to just like heal pulse away and win the game. Um, although maybe I mean what I would have done. Um, I guess I still would have been in Sludge Bomb KR range. Maybe Goth wasn't the best. I'm actually going to turn the light on. It's kind of dark in my room right now. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's pretty interesting to think about. Like, with Landris Amoongus as a lead coming out from my opponent, Kang Goth is probably pretty optimal about that, around that, because I have Ice Punch Pressure, I have Trick Room Pressure, and, and I can switch into Coco as well. So I wasn't expecting the knockoff. I was definitely expecting a U-turn from Landorus on that first turn, but I mean, we'll take it. Find Chris from Canada with a rating of 1525. We are on kind of a nice win streak right now, so we'll see if we can try to push into the 1700s. Chris walking a team of Charizard, Landorus, Titar, Feeny, Aegislash, and Charizard. Did I say Charizard already? Charizard, Landorus, Cresselia, Titar, Feeny, Aegislash. Hmm, okay. Um, this definitely does seem like a Kang lead. Kang Ozu honestly seems pretty good here. King Azu. I am quite worried about the Aegislash. Coco still seems okay for just getting a big Gigavolt Havoc off, which uh, and HP Ice against Landris. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Goth here because my opponent can reverse Trick Room and has Aegislash and Titar. So King Amoongus. I'm oh, sorry, Kang Azumarill. Um, Amoongus, really not that great here. I'm thinking just Coco and Snorlax, like full offense. Because... The only good thing about Amoongus is I can redirect with Rage Powder, specifically with Azumarill. I, I want Snorlax as well, I guess. But I think I like the offense more here, because I don't necessarily need redirection to get a Belly Drum off this game. Especially with Kangaskhan Fake Out on the first turn. So ideally, I just get a Belly Drum off and go from there, but obviously that's easier said than done. And Charizard with the Sun will obviously be able to negate the damage output from Aqua Jet as well. So that could be big. But I'm max speed, so unless my opponent Charizard is max speed, I know Kangaskhan should be outspeeding it. Most Charizards like to invest in like some bulk or go with Modest Nature for more damage output. So we're going to see Aegislash and Cress. Okay. Hmm... I believe this is Scrappy Kang. I just want to double check. Yeah, it is. So I could actually fake out Aegislash and Belly Drum turn one. Uh, the only threat is Cresselia Trick Rooming. So maybe I actually should have brought Amoongus because then I could have just switched in Amoongus. I think I'm going to go for that. I'm going to fake out a Belly Drum. And then what I can do the next turn is switch Kangaskhan out into Snorlax, protect Azumarill, and then suddenly I threaten with double Belly Drum. And if I get both Belly Drums off, my opponent's in a real world of hurt, because then I put on pressure with Azumarill with priority, and Snorlax is also the slowest Pokemon. Crest actually switches out, which is even better for me, as Landorus comes in. That's great. That's really great, actually. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's why I run Scrappy. So I will get my Belly Drum off now. Um, I am still worried about, like, Tectonic Rage Landorus, so I think this next turn I'm going to protect Azumarill and go for an Ice Punch onto Landorus. Mm, if I had to guess, you would think the Aegislash is the one with the Z-move, though. Let's see. Let's take a look at this team. It's not going to be Feeny, most likely, although we actually did see a Watarium Z Feeny in Sydney. It's not going to be Cresselia most of the time. It's not Charizard. Not Tyranitar, definitely. I don't think Landorus has the Z-move, but I think I'm still going to play it safe this turn and just Ice Punch Landorus. Because regardless of what variant, like, most Landruses don't carry Protect. And I'm just going to Protect Azumarill. It also baits Aegislash out into Sword Form. Now, the only downside is, like, it's unlikely Aegislash King Shield's here, so I did have the opportunity to attack it, but I'd rather just, like, force it into Blade Form and go from there. Uh, Ice Punch, I don't think knocks out Landrus, but it does, like, around 90% or so, even with Intimidate. And so, when I have, like, you know, a freeze chance there, it's 10% per hit, so it's 19% to get a freeze off one. Uh, but nice play, the Landorus actually switches out, and it's going to go into Tyranitar. 
So, I mean, my opponent has showed me all of his Pokemon here, though. So next turn, I could just maybe go for a low kick and a knockoff. Of course, if I Aqua Jetted this turn into the Tyranitar slot, it would have been really sweet. I also do have knockoff. We'll see if Aegislash King Shields here, as it does, which is really good for me. Because now I know this next turn, I can just go for a knockoff into that slot. So yeah, this is like a perfect uh, setup for Zoomerl. Oh, I didn't Mega Evolve. I forgot to Mega Evolve. <laughs> Whoops. That's fine. Now I'm going to Mega Evolve. Low kick the Tyranitar and knock off Aegislash. I think minus one low kick still knocks out Tyranitar, so my opponent would have to switch the Aegislash out to survive. But if you switch out an Alandris, low kick still does a ton of damage. If you don't flinch me, then knock off will just knock Aegislash out. Like, my play here is a lot simpler because I know Aegislash went for the King Shield last turn. I, yeah, I, I mean, obviously I wish I Mega Volcanus on last turn because I would have done a little bit more damage and also had a higher chance of freezing. A uh, freeze really would have helped seal this game up. But with Tyranitar not switching out, I mean, if this is not Scarftar, I just get a double knockout here. Maybe my opponent doesn't anticipate a knockoff or maybe it is Scarftar. Scarftar would be kind of bad for me. But it just protects, which is great. Unless Aegislash is faster. That could also be a concern. Let's see. Okay, nice. That's so good for me. Knockoff comes out, and that's a KO. That honestly should win me the game. Because Aegislash was the one thing I had to worry about with the zoom roll. So yeah, my opponent just let me get a free Belly Drum offset up. And obviously, like, wasn't probably expecting the scrappy fake out from Kangaskhan. So that really saved me this game. But I knew I had that option. And it's exactly why I run it. So Anders is going to come back in, but that's fine. Uh, so now the question is, who do I want to target with the zoom roll? I know that the Tyranitar protected last turn. I think I'm at plus 4 attack right now, I believe, with the zoom roll. I'm plus 5, whoops. Um, I think the one way I lose this game is if I let a belly drum setup happen. Sorry, not a belly drum. A Landris shouldn't be able to knock me out anyway, so I'm actually just going to Ice Punch Landris and Aqua Jet the Tar. Yeah, the only I think the one way I lose is if Tyranitar gets a Dragon Dance setup and starts flinching everything, because I don't have any rock resists. So I'm going to Aqua Jet that slot. Even if Crest switches in, it's going to take a ton of damage. Ice Punch, obviously, at minus 2 attack won't knock out Landorus, but uh, it should 2-shot it uh, for next turn. Earthquake here from Landorus definitely won't knock out my Azumarill unless it crits or it's banded or Life Orbed. Um, and Landorus does switch out, which means that should seal up the game, since plus 5 Aqua Jet should still knock out Tyranitar. We'll see in a second, but yeah. So, you know, choosing, uh, Aqua Jetting the right slot there was pr a pretty big deal, and I do get it correctly, but I figured that was the safer option anyway. And, yeah, this is why I really love Ice Punch on Kangaskhan, because so many Landruses, like, aren't gonna have Protect. So, no Freeze, but I'll, I'll take that turn, definitely, still. And I think now I'm just gonna swap Kangaskhan out, reset the Intimidate, get Snorlax in, and Aqua Jet the Landru slot. I mean, this game was clear demonstration of how good Azumarill can be. So I am at plus 4 attack now, um, that I think still might knock out Landorus, uh, but I know I can beat the Cresselia with the Snorlax that I have in the back, I know Landorus can't intimidate me any longer, I know Crest can't knock out the Azumarill directly unless for some reason it's running like Energy Ball, which I actually did run briefly in VGC 2012 and 13 on offensive Cresselia with Expert Belt slash Toy Specs. But here it's a pretty clear-cut play. Uh, get rid of Kangaskhan, or reset the Intimidates, because uh, it's going to be so much stronger once it comes back in. Ice Punch can one-shot the Landris, also got Fake Out Pressure. No Protect coming out, so I think Azumarill here just picking up another clean knockout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Today's really been the Azumarill show. It has put in a ton of work, but... You know, Kangaskhan, not a Mega Evolution Let's used as much, because I think offensively it's a little bit weaker, obviously, with the nerf. Um, to <laughs> I actually get Crit Psychic. Does that knock me out? Let's see, with Sand. I think I hang on. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, like, a little bit weaker, um, but having Fake Out is just so good. Like, Scrappy Fake Out plus the Mega Evolution, and it does have a lot of pressure still with damage. I really love Gothitoe because I have a helping hand, so I'm able to kind of mitigate the damage reduction that we saw with the uh, nerf. But, yeah, I'll just Belly Drum here and knock off. I don't know. I actually didn't see who was faster between... I think Crest was faster. Um, wait, is that the last one of Sandstorm? Because I can protect. Yeah, it's the last one of Sandstorm. So I'm just going to get double Belly Drum off this game. I mean, the game's over at this point, but no reason not to go for this play. And yeah, my opponent just forfeits. So yeah, basically, Scrappy Fake Out turn 1 really put me up huge, but then my, also, my opponent also King Shielded with Aegislash. I was probably hoping for a knockoff going into that slot, the turn that I attacked, and no knockoff came out. And so I feel like I played that game relatively safe, um, because the Aegislash King Shielded, I was in a very good position after that, with... 
no Charizard or Feeny, uh, it also meant that I had a lot more power to just sweep with Kangaskhan and Azumarill. So that was a really good demonstration of how good Azumarill can be, uh, especially when partnered up with Kangaskhan. So yeah, we do get another couple of wins, three wins, and we are really close to the 1700s now. So I've been pretty impressed with this team, honestly, uh, the last couple of days. I think it's performed really well, so hopefully I can keep up the play. I don't think I've played like extraordinarily well, but uh, I definitely think I've highlighted some of the team strengths. I haven't highlighted all of it. Would still like to get like a combo off where I'm just like heal pulsing and setting up with Snorlax. But yeah, we do get three wins and we're just going to go on from here. So yeah, thank you guys for watching as always. If you enjoyed, please share support by leaving a like and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. All right, peace.